Hello again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are last week of July already. What the heck is up with that? Oh. Um, Manchester Farmer's Market kicked in. I don't know when it kicks in, but I know it's like three to six. Um, three to six on Thursday afternoons in Stark not Stark Park, mm -mm. in front of the hotel, in front of the Radisson. Um, Veteran, no, yeah. Stanton. Victory, Victory Park. Oh, okay. Is it? Yes, well, okay. that's the, that, that, that is there's what a, the voice from above is telling There's a farmer's market someplace. <laughs> um, apparently, I don't go to that. Um, I did read that the Bedford Farmer's Market, not to have competition, but Bedford Farmer's Market has now moved to uh, Murphy's Carriage House parking lot. Oh, really? On Tuesday afternoon. Oh, so nice. that's kind of interesting. Keith decided that... You know, he had plenty of space there and they were looking for a space, so he oh. opted to do that. Keith's a good guy. That's um, wonderful. Also read in the paper today uh, that the Cedar Swamp Preserve, which is um, maintained and uh, built by the Nature Conservancy, is expanding it and making more accessible. Um, I'm not really, for my own personal thing, I, I do think it's nice that it's more accessible, you know, because we have friends that are in wheelchairs and... Um, the more pl outdoor places that they can access, obviously, the better. Um, I, d I worry that some of the trail, I, it'll be interesting because is it all going to be gravel? Because that kind of takes away the thrill of, that takes away part of the ambiance of walking on a trail if it's a gravel pathway. Um, also, not sure Manchester taxpayers need to pay for a bus route to the hiking trail. Like, first of all, most people, are there that many people that don't have any way to... I mean, I, have, I, I, I don't know. I have yet to see a bus in Manchester, <sighs> New Hampshire, that has more than a person, right. meaning the driver in it. So, you know, oh, what I've do I know? One, I mean, sometimes I'll see one or two people, but it's not like we ever have a busload of people. Um, so there's that. It'll be interesting to see how that is. I, I love the Cedar Swamp Preserve. It's one of my uh, favorite local walking places. I haven't been this year. Uh, maybe Dan and I, if we get some time, which we don't have. Um, I also um, wanted to talk a little bit today about, um, how was Freedom for us, by the way? You were off in the Badlands? I was off in the, I was off being good in the Badlands. So uh, I went to Freedom Fest. It was in uh, South Dakota, Rapid City, South Dakota. It's the first time I've flown yeah. since uh, all this nonsense it's not, started. It's not the end of the world, right? It's, it's, I mean, it's a it's, pain in the butt, but meh. I mean, honestly, I, you know, just kind of went in and doing my do, going yep. with my superpower, which is my smile, which is why I resent the masks. Um, you know, the first guy was like, oh, could you put on a face covering, please? And I pulled out my gator that I bought specifically yeah. to fly. It was a Mexican death mask, being a little... A little snarky. Snarky. Um, I was told you're not allowed to wear gaiters anymore. You are only allowed to wear, you know, whatever those paper masks are or those uh, ones with yeah. the hooks, right, with the thing. And, Which is um, kind of weird. And so I asked because, you know, it's like, well, this is a face covering, so why are they suddenly saying this but not this? Yep. And I believe it's because a lot of people were showing their disdain for what, is being required because of course you know let's just parse this out from a logical perspective so if you're drinking water or eating something or whatever germs don't exist but they do exist at the other times um actually one of the announcements that was made on the airplane that literally made us all just laugh out loud was um two things one was when they were doing the safety instructions they actually the the air hostesses were wearing masks and so they had to say, in the event that an oxygen mask yeah, drops from the, take this mask off, and put this that mask mask off on. to put That's this crazy. mask on. Okay, so I was like, wow, we're actually at that level of idiotocracy. The other thing that made me at least laugh out loud was they were like, if you, and this is while we are actually taxiing to take off, if you would like to social distance on a entirely full flight, I might add, then, you know, please let us know. And I was so, Where would you put them? so tempted to press that little button and be like, let's see. But then I was like, oh, you know, the FAA, <laughs> oh, I mean, no. you know, we'll probably You'll end up getting yeah, no. arrested and blah, blah, blah. And but that is that. weird. Like, wh what does that mean? Like, you're going to go on the wing? I, I mean, I think they probably have a jump seat or they give one of the, uh, but what if six one of the air hostels. Yeah, they have no, a lottery? No, 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 there is no. In logic. Rhyme or reason, no. there is no logic. It is um, just, you know, basically watching craziness. But, okay, those were the negatives. The positives, great conference. Yeah. I got to do a... Um, a book 
C-SPAN book TV for the ecstatic pessimist, which I kept calling the ecstatic optimist. So, so what's that mean? <laughs> Freudian right? slippy. So you, I mean, this may amaze you. So first of all, the, um, it was remote, right? So I couldn't actually see the guy I was talking to, yeah. but having done this a while now, I was like, like, oh, I know, make love to the camera. <laughs> you know? So we started chatting and it was, I mean, it was hard. You have an earpiece. Yes. Um, the the There's studio, that delay too. The studio was actually set up right by the registration desk and it was like on the first day. So there are thousands of people coming in. There are these yeah. announcements going off. I think all things told, it went as well as it could yeah. have. But the guy, you know, he, I, I asked, oh, how long is it going to be? And he said, you know, let's see, 10, 15 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Okay. It was a 45 minute interview, awesome. which felt really good. But, you know, I don't know if these journalists are just living in their own like little DC bubble, if they're actually just given up, you know, they're like, ah, someone will send me a press release about what I'm supposed to think. But he sounded at least based on the question he asked me, I talked about, you know, the fact that people are being censored and shadow banned. Yep. And he actually asked me, what is shadow banning? And I was like, are you a journalist? Like, how can you not have at a minimum heard the term? Now, maybe he was playing devil's advocate. I don't know. But he seemed to have never heard the term shadow banned, which of course is when, you know, algorithmically, the, uh, you know, the, the robots and the uh, censors and all the people who are, who are really just, you know, pushing one narrative, uh, decide that you are not entitled to your opinion anymore. Right. Nor can and you that, have access to And that you just won't actually opinions. get any kind of, you know, you don't appear in people's feeds. Yep. Uh, you, you know, are immediately censored for yep. certain things. You know, you get all the warnings slapped on your stuff. I mean, I'm getting COVID warnings on like food Everything, pictures. right? <laughs> it's like warning, this could be COVID related. And you're um, like, oh, it could be, maybe not. Um, so that, that was exciting for me personally. I did um, sit on a panel that was boomers versus Zoomers, of which I'm neither. Yeah. So I was like the Gen X troublemaker. Actually, no one was a boomer or a zoomer it was me and larry sharp taking the boomer position kind of and then hannah cox um i think she's from fox news or something and another young gentleman brad palomo i believe is his last name and they took sort of the they were millennials but yeah. they were taking the zoomer position and that was interesting because obviously the young people blame the old people the old people blame the you know young people and my position ended up being, and it was actually quite popular and people came to talk to me afterwards, is I was like, we're not going to solve any of these problems until people start to build forgiveness yep. somewhere in this model, right? Because we're currently in a situation where people are literally saying, this, the government's not wrong. Like the government is God, right? And, 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 or presenting as God, omniscient. And there's only, you know, the government's position and this must be the one truth. I mean, I was thinking about it. The science is settled. I'm like, definitionally, science is never settled. No. That is the definition science of science. Science is always going, always. I mean, if we said science, I mean, the one that always cracks me up and it is science because it's, it's, um, light waves light waves um colors we were brought up saying that there were three primary colors red blue and green red no, blue and no, yellow no. and that they made purple orange and green and that was the way of the color no actually that's not true at all they've d determined that light waves those are not the cmyk model is actually correct there oh, is wow. no red um red blue and yellow that that oh. like in purple i want to say purple doesn't have any Purple is just what your brain sees when it can't see anything else. <laughs> so it's like just that science. Like if you would, who would have ever thought that they changed the science on primary colors? Well, so science is never settled. So um, so that was great. Some of the keynote speakers, you know, Naomi Wolf, mm. who had come to Porkfest. Uh, Dave Smith was yeah. like the MC. Tom Woods, who was at Porkfest. Uh, couldn't make it to Freedom Fest because he unfortunately has pneumonia. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Didn't he have a, was he, who had the lung collapse? Oh no, that was no. Uh, uh, Crowder. Stephen Crowder had a lung um, collapse. 
they had Dave Rubin, who had, yeah, I, I guess I love Dave Rubin. Yeah, I, I mean, I had no idea he was a controversial oh, figure. Yes, I watch yes. his podcast from time to time. He's and not controversial. Like, I don't think he's controversial, but he is because. I mean, well, based on the fact that I posted one little picture about him from like nine million feet away up in the bleachers and, you know, all the crazies on Facebook came at me. Can I just categorically say something? Look. If you post pictures of people, this whole notion of... You have you, to be 100% in agreement with everything that you say or post or like or share? Yeah, well, yeah, but just, it's also like, uh, people are entitled to opinions. People are allowed to be wrong about things. People are allowed to say, oh, I'm not sure. I'm going to go explore yeah. this. I'm going to look here. I'm going to interview this person. Yeah. I'm going to, you know... But but there's this notion now that you just know if you even post a picture of this person, then, then you are by proxy racist because you've decided that Dave Rubin is a racist and blah. And I'm like, you know, that Dave is the Rubin. Be, that I is, don't really that, think that, Dave that Rubin's like a racist. That is the thinking of like Stasi. Um, so what does it mean mentality? when I put, when I share Candace? Um, Owens thinks. Does that make me a racist and her a racist? Because oh she's God. black. Well, well. I she, mean, like. So, so I, I have seen clips of her actually saying, just for the record, I am a, you know, powerful black woman who is now consistently called a white supremacist. So, you know, I mean, don't even get me oh. started. So there was Dave, um, Project Veritas. Oh, nice. I, mean, I did see a picture James from that. O'Keefe. Uh, so, you know, he's been doing really great work. And actually what he did that was really powerful, I think, is he brought all his whistleblowers out. So the nice. lady who, you know, was on the news and yeah. she was like, oh, and I'm just going to sneak this in during the weather. Yeah. Uh, the guy from Google. There's... Um, there was a, I think it was a postal worker. So all these whistleblowers and really their main message was if you see something and you know it's wrong and you know, contact Project Veritas. Right, and they'll look. They will help you. Yep. They have a lot of money. They have legal teams yep. and they will help you to get the truth out. And I think that is now a moral imperative. Well, because, because it's become blatantly obvious to so many people that what we... Now, what we were brought up to think was the news and how we could get valid information is completely bogus. We, you know, Walter Cronkite would say X, Y, and Z, and you, uh, Walter Cronkite said X, Y, and Z, it must be the case. Th that's so not the case anymore. Everything you see on um, MSNBC, I mean, even Fox, you know, like I watched, oh, the only thing I probably watch on Fox is Tucker Carlson, and I take everything he says with a grain of salt. Of course. I probably agree <laughs> with him more often than not, but I can also see that he's spinning because none of them are news outlets. They are entertainment outlets, and people can't wrap their head around that, and that's, that's why Project Veritas and groups like that are so important. Um, so yeah, so all in all, great. I will also say that uh, Rapid City did not seem entirely prepared for the that onslaught. You know, there was no Uber, the lifts were really slow, that kind of stuff. But I did borrow a friend's car and uh, very early one of the mornings, I drove out to the Badlands and Cause Honestly, mom said you had to. Because my mom was like, if you go there and you don't do that, you're in trouble. And um, and I'm really glad she insisted. You know, you always want to keep your mom happy if you can. So, um, so I drove out and I found it to be just incredibly stunning. It felt very spiritual. It was very, you know, it was early in the morning. It was kind of quiet. Just these canyons and these rocks and the red and the stones and the whole thing. So... It was, um, all in all, I would say it's a great trip. However, you want to talk I, about Cranky? Well, Tammy just does her, you know, I don't I'm know, sorry. social I've media got, while she's on. I've got work on. being done on, one of my, on my other house, and I have to. Um, okay. So, so while Tammy is doing that, um, I will inform Roofers. everyone, if you are planning a trip anytime oh. soon, you may want to check whether your passport is still valid. I was supposed to fly to Ecuador no, not Ecuador, Honduras, Roatan, Honduras on Thursday for finally a vacation after maybe four years. And uh, yeah, my passport and my husband's passport have expired. So we have spent the last week yes. in, uh, I would say, like... Frenzy? No, I would say like a 10 out of 10 uh, bureaucratic insanity mm -hmm. loop, which goes something like this. 
If you want help, you need to go to our website and make an appointment. You go to the website and there are no slots available. Then you ask about that. So last week sometime they just took the website where you can make appointments offline. Now it doesn't even exist. So yesterday we drove to Portsmouth. Which is There's, where the office for yeah, passports so, or whatever is. Right, so it's out in Pease. It's not yeah. that one downtown anymore. So, um, so we drive there. The office opens at 7.30. We're there at 7.30. There's a crowd of maybe like 10 people already waiting. Uh, there's a giant sign that says, go to this website to make an appointment. You can't come into the building. No exceptions. Or call this number, okay? The number we've been trying to call for the last week. Okay, so you call that number and it either hangs up on you or you go through every... I went through yeah, every, every possible... Every possible iteration several times and then you're just in an infinite loop and then it hangs up on you so the Government. expedited process is now i think 11 to 18 weeks for expedited expedited four and a half months passport for a passport so I'm not, you, and you're not even you already have a passport it just expired four and a half months expedited so so i was literally like look so i kept ringing the bell right so the doors are locked they won't let you in at all and now you know i'm i'm kind of like getting snitty with some poor security guard who's literally just going lady i'm just the security guard i'm like then go find me someone who can help right yes so in the time that all of that was happening they could have just had one person there were only 10 of us down there and they could have said, if you have an actual issued passport, so not the people who have other visa yeah, issues yeah. or, you know, Just whatever the other Just an American citizen with a passport. passport. We can literally put a stamp in that extends it. It's an endorsement on your passport and you could be done in like half an hour. But no. So I will not be going on vacation to my fabulous <laughs> friend's beach house with Sorry. the private chef and everything that was going to be a gift to us um so i was like oh maybe we can drive up to maine maine is sold out oh forget maine i don't I know mean, why i live in new hampshire so for us to go to maine is one thing i guess because it's like it's right there whatever right. i have so many friends from home that go to vacation in maine and i'm like no, why? I mean, I mean, because it's beautiful and there's a big coastline and whatever. I mean, it's not hot ocean, but at this stage, I'll take a cold beach. And I'm just like, you know, so if someone can help me understand why there's this massive backlog, because it seems to me like, you know, I mean, we all know government's incompetent, but somehow COVID has managed to make government a hundred times more incompetent, a thousand times more incompetent. Maybe they just have entirely given up. I don't know, but I'm not impressed and uh, I'm deeply frustrated and it shouldn't have to be like this. Mm, I agree. Um, you know, maybe they could just do a moratorium and say, if you have an active American passport, well, they, you can and fly for the next six months on, if as long as it's within the year. Well, of I the, mean, they did it with driver's licenses and stuff. Right. Where they said, oh, you don't have to renew your driver's license for six months because of COVID. But isn't all of this backlog halfway partially due to COVID? I'll tell you. So I don't even know how many weeks ago, because if I look up the letter, it'll probably drive me nuts. So I got a letter from the IRS saying that they were giving me a refund for 2018 and that my check would arrive in four to six weeks. It was definitely more than four to six weeks ago because six weeks ago would have been pork fest. And right. it was well before that. So I don't understand. Once you've determined what the amount is that you're sending me, how does it take like months for a check to come out of a printer and come in the mail to me? I think it's so like, I don't get it. Okay. All right. So that is all cranky pants for today. Um, we got we got maybe eight minutes. We should talk a little bit about the city um, elections. So yeah. Filing so tell period, me what happened. Filing period ended at Friday. Uh, Republicans are pretty content with the the slate that we put out there. Um, we filed. We only didn't um, seat a candidate in two places. Uh, I'm very excited in Ward 10. There's this gentleman, his name is Nick Pigeon. Um, there was a great picture of him doing like one of those Tough Mudder races. <laughs> um, he's young, father of three, lives obviously in Ward 10. Um, social worker, community gardener. Oh, wonderful. Um, undeclared, but definitely more 
Republican, Libertarian, then Democrat. And I think it'll be very interesting to watch um, the Democrats have to try to figure out how they can beat up on the social worker, community gardener, dad of three. Guys. Oh, I, I mean, I mean um, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Oh, the Democrats I mean, somehow right. figure it out to go, your body, your choice, yeah. except when we don't like what you want to do with your body, and then we'll just say, no, we own you too. There's obviously a primary in the mayor's race. Victoria Sullivan and Rich Gerard are both Republicans going against Joyce Craig, the Democrat. There She's are, worried. I will tell I you that. She there, is worried. There are eight. And she should be. Eight candidates, four of which will get through the primary for Alderman at large. We have Elizabeth Moreau as a Republican, Dan Goonan's a Republican, Joe Kelly Lavasser is a Republican. Then the Democrats are June Triskiani, Dan O'Neill, Mary Georges, Mark Dennis, and Anthony Harris. I don't know what party he's in because he had to get added to the list at the last thing. Uh, school committee at large, again, four will get through, and there are six candidates. The Democrats are... Peter Agaropoulos and Jim O'Connell, who's just a nightmare. And then three Republicans, Steve Fote, Will Infantine, and Joe Lachance. When is um, the primary? The primary, if I'm not mistaken, is Tuesday, September 21st. Um, the probably most interesting point of the day. Um, so I went down to the, at, on Friday at 3 o'clock, mostly just to see who had signed up so that if there was somebody that needed a reminder, I could. <laughs> and then I ended up staying because it was easier to stay than try to keep track of who showed up. Right. Um, uh, Andy from Manchester Ink Link was there. Uh, a couple different, there was uh, Patty Cornell from the Democrats and her husband were there. Um, Amanda Bolden, who's a Democrat from Ward 5, was there at one point. You know, uh, John DePietro. There's a bunch of people there, right? Victoria Sullivan was down there. Um, as the 5 o'clock mark approached, um, we didn't think Joe Kelly Lavasser had filed, which later we found out that he had filed. He just didn't come to the counter and file, which oh, he can. Because okay. um, you don't actually, you just have to be there. So he must have handed the papers to one of the clerk's people. Um, and in Ward 6, um, incumbent uh, Dave, I think his name's Dave Bergeron, hadn't shown up. And I'm watching the clock and I'm like, three minutes, no. two minutes, one minute, ding, five o'clock. So the clerk's office closes. We all go outside. The city hall closes. We're a group of Republicans standing over here, a group of Democrats standing over there. In like Banshee, where's Waldo, comes running um, school committee member Bergeron. It, it's now 5.01 and he's at the door like, let me in, let me in. And we're all like, yeah, dude, five o'clock. And a city, I mean, city hall was literally closed. Um, and a city employee was leaving and he got in the building. Then he was pacing back and forth outside the city clerk's office. I don't know what he thought. It, it's five o'clock. That's when that eventually I think he left through the other door. And mm. so in Ward 6... As peculiar as it is, um, you have two Democrat or two Republicans running for alderman with no Democrat candidate, and um, Ken Tassi, who's the Republican who filed for school committee, has no opponent. Okay, so I, I mean, you know, it'll I be interesting um, for those of you who are Republican-minded and would like to help the Republican team. Uh, we have in August, I think it's on like the twenty-fifth. We have a, a great fundraiser over at Casey's Rib Shack. It's the Tiki fundraiser. This is our ninth year. It was last. So if you missed it last year, definitely come yeah, this it's year. Just it really, was really so good. much fun. Um, it it's was... cheap, and we have um, early bird tickets on sale through the first of the August for just fifty bucks a person for a fundraiser. You get food, you get a cocktail, um, if, or a soft drink, whatever you want. Um, we don't have endless speakers um, this year. I we are doing little glassware for our guests. Oh, fun. Um, so if you um, Look for that on ManchesterGOP.com, and I'm going to say that, and it probably isn't there. You can find it on the Manchester Republican Committee Facebook page, or you could reach out to one of us here at manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, it's a great event. If you want to help support Republican candidates and get them elected in November, this is a great way to do that. And it's um, a nice way to just casually meet people. It's a great event. There's a, it's nice it's to fun. meet your neighbors. It's actually it, there, fun. It's not like a boring political event. No. No, last yeah, year was you wear a little hopping. Hawaiian shirt, maybe a little hat. <laughs> it's fun. Um, what else? Uh, the, if you're outside today, be careful because apparently the air quality is really, really bad because of um, fires on the West Coast. 
Um, that's why it's been hazy for the last couple days. But so, they say the West Coast is perfectly clear because so it's all just moved this way. It's so weird. So it's some kind of jet stream. But yeah. I did see something unverified. I don't know if this is true, but I did see something that said that the moon's position has changed a little bit, which sounded weird to me, but that that has actually changed how the Gulf screen is oh. going. Because, you know, it seems crazy that we would have it all the way out I mean, here. I mean, South Dakota is, was just, it was just hazy. Yeah, I mean, I noticed it a couple nights ago. I was like, what's up with the sun going down? And it was very orangey. And it was just, it was reminding me of a Florida sunset. Right. And I was like, that's unusual for us. And then Dan was like, oh, that's the smoke. And then yesterday I noticed when we were out, like I was like, you can actually smell, like mm. you could actually smell just something not right in the air. Um, and it's today too, so. So I think the warning is till noon o'clock yeah. today to preferably yeah, just stay inside. Don't, don't ex you know. I exert mean, yourself yeah. outside. I also think this is just part of the safeyism. And, well, you it know, is, but I mean, when I lived <laughs> in Los Angeles, I remember my a friend of mine had a baby and she was surprised that when she, because um, we have tons of smog in Los Angeles, and she's, you know, going to leave the hospital and they're like, okay, so don't bring the baby outside for like six months unless you absolutely have to. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like, don't, doesn't everybody walk their baby? I live in California. And they said, oh no, the air quality is so bad it will actually, ca could ha cause lung. And I was like, holy cow. So it's things that we're not used to because we live in a very clean part of the country, we which do. has crystal clear, wonderful air. I have to tell you when I was coming in yesterday, flying over Manchester, I, you know, I was like, it's green. There's water everywhere. We're really, truly lucky yes. to live in New Hampshire. And we should remember that, you know, as the insanity of the world. To go back to the passports, I mean, I think it might be like a soft control for, for, you know, if you don't have a passport, you can't yeah, go you anywhere. Can it is kind of a way to um, just in a very sneaky way control people's movement. So uh, I'm going to chalk it up to that. Next week, we want to talk a little bit about the PCR test and, and the, the fact that, that several are. of them, as you will recall, we for a year, a, a year now have been saying those tests do not accurately measure what is going on. They vastly overstate what's happening. Two of the tests have now been recalled. It is almost impossible to find that information online. You can find it on the CDC FDA websites. If you dig like a crazy academic, if you try and post that information to Facebook. It will not link to the actual source material. It would only link to the front page of the CDC. So I'm calling nonsense on that too. Um, if you miss our show on TV or if you're watching it on Facebook and want to watch it again, Carla does a great job. She uploads it to YouTube and also to Odyssey. That's O-D-Y-S-E-E. -E. That is a Manchester-based um, company that offers alternative platform to YouTube, which I'm gonna start promoting more readily because- So Odyssey is a censor-proof platform. Yes. And so for people who down. actually care about analyzing all the stories in order to get to the truth and not just what one group of people who have a vested economic interest in what they are promoting. So if you want the truth, go to odyssey.com. That's all we got for this week. Enjoy the weather, uh, stay out of the smog, and we'll be back next week. Thanks Bye. guys.